Welcome to Penfield Trails Committee, October 6th monthly meeting at the Penfield Town Hall Auditorium. I'm Nels Carmen Chairman, and after calling ourselves to order, which we just did, we review our September meeting, which we had right here, uh, our Eleanor's Excellent Minutes, we call them, from the September 8th meeting. And while people are reviewing to either approve or make small corrections, I'm going to promote our very excellent October hike with a banner here. Saturday, 10 o'clock, at Shadow Pines Open Space is our monthly hike, 10 a.m., and we're going to have it guided. And of course, if you've been out there or you haven't been out there, this is the right month to be hiking in this beautiful place. It has the old back 18 to cover and the, and the uh, front nine to cover in two different directions. We'll meet at the parking lot, at the kiosk, and I'll be there at a card table holding up this banner so you know where to park and register with me Saturday, 10 o'clock, October 9th. Terry, are you guiding? I am. Terry Smith, our executive member, Terry, will yeah. be guiding. Or Terry Bruce. One of his favorite one. things to do. <laughs> um, so have, have we looked at the minutes and what do we think? We'll, we'll let the minutes reflect that it'll be Terry Bruce that'll be uh, leading the hike, uh, not Terry Smith. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> I could look at his name tag and, and make that yes. site. Oh, right here. <laughs> I'll move Terry to Bruce, will you please leave the hike? I will Saturday. be happy to, Nels. Thank you. <laughs> I move that the minutes be accepted as presented. I'll second that. Thank you, gentlemen. Committee discussion. Uh, we had our history hike, which we do every September, down at the gazebo, Linear Park, Chan Philbrook Park, uh, where it used to be the old, uh, part of the old Rondicoit Waterways uh, treatment plant. And also, uh, and a very important site for the beginning of town of Penfield, where Daniel Penfield sold his water rights to many millers uh, right there. And so after going through our history um, context there for Dan Penfield's water rights, the beginning of Penfield, we hiked upstream to uh, the end of the Penfield line, which has a view of the Linner Road Bridge, but you can't get there uh, because of the steep rip rack bank of Arundacoit Creek. So we went upstream. It was a beautiful Indian summer type day, partially cloudy with blue patches. Twelve people hiked and I led, so it was one staff, twelve hikers. Again, we just talked about our Shadow Pines uh, open space hike. Saturday, 10 o'clock at the parking lot at Whalen and Clark Road. And uh, I'm going to be there. Terry Bruce is going to be there. <laughs> Does anybody else on the committee want to help out? Are you going to be with an alternative to uh, direction of hiking? We'll figure that out. Terry and I can figure that out for sure okay. Saturday. Mm -hmm. Uh, Eagle Scout Projects update. I've had no further incursions on after the three nibbles, uh, but I did I did copy those uh, nibbles on the email sites over to Ed Linskook, so it's a matter of record that we know they're there, and what I will do is press them on going to work this fall. What we really need, like we reiterated before, is is uh, Honey Creek needs a brand new kiosk, and it needs two new signs too. So without the signs, I went up and made some up on both ends of Honey Creek, but they look rather temporary, but at least they're there and do mark uh, both ends of the trail with the proper nomenclature. So Honey Creek needs work, and then more work for boardwalks at key locations, especially at our own new Four Mile Creek Park, which uh, we'll speak about that later when we do our 2022 monthly hiking schedule. Uh, 
So uh, again, Honey Creek got two signs from me over the weekend. And that's our immediate trails need report that I noticed. Anybody else notice anything immediate that needs to be corrected out on our trails system? Okay, thanks. Conservation Board had two meetings. Do you have a summary, Ed Linskoog? Yeah, from the meeting on September 14th, uh, they forwarded a report from 2745 Penfield Road, which is called Highland Estates. Uh, Let me uh, give you a, a synopsis of, of what uh, they, they talked about. Uh, two people uh, toured the site and they reported that uh, far from the water course and historic buildings do not see any impact from those on proposed development. Uh, lot 16, uh, near a steep slope, they recommended it be, be moved. Uh, this uh, site has not yet been approved by the planning board. Uh, a future pond needs to be built on lot one. There were a number of residents, uh, both from Penfield and uh, Parenton, that spoke. Uh, they commented about the size of the lots, which are legal according to town code at two, at, uh, two acres, but uh, the area was farmed. Uh, the, the only other thing that was brought up by the Historic Preservation Board are the, from New York State is uh, they, they want the site uh, looked at for old relics because it is next to a, an historic farmhouse. So the developers agreed to plow the land up and turn it over once and see if there's anything that gets exposed when they do that. Uh, the other item that was discussed was uh, mix, in mixed use development. Uh, 90 acres from it uh, on two, Route 250 from Atlantic Avenue to Penfield Center Road. A number of things were discussed. Uh, the, the board agreed to, to assign two people to look at that site and come back at the next meeting, which I will report on after I finish this one. Uh, most of the land is was open farmland or orchards, and so there's not any uh, wooded areas that are impacted, and if the site is fairly dry, and there are no steep slopes involved. It, it's uh, uh, going to be called the arbors at Penfield. Uh, several other projects were discussed at that meeting with the Conservation Board. Uh, subdivision on the corner of Plank and Salt, 15 acres. Pa uh, reviewing, still reviewing past stone mixed-use development, which is uh, north of the Y and and north of the present uh, development that's there. That's uh, the one on the other side of uh, 250 across from the Y, uh, Penfield Heights, that, that was denied by the planning board to, because it did not meet the zoning requirements as stated. Subdivision off of Old Jackson Road, the model home has been completed and two homes are under construction. Uh, Shady Rock subdivision off of Scribner Road currently has three houses under construction. And uh, the new Starbucks going on in, on 250 near 441. Uh, new AAA and a former Tom Wall site, uh, an urgent care facility. 
and the new Burger King on Route 250 next to Panera Bread. Their next meeting was last night. Uh, they did a report on the arbors at Penfield mixed-use development. Uh, the two people that did the survey walked the whole site but didn't see much of anything that uh, would prohibit being it developed. Because like I stated before, it's mostly old farmlands and orchard. Uh, the only thing they commented on is that maybe it's an opportunity to leave some of the old apple trees there to support some of the deer that are, are in the area. Uh, the other part of their discussion last night was a trail discussion, and that centered around a, a trail extension from uh, behind Topps Market to Penfield Road. Uh, the Conservation Board is interested in helping us if we ask them for something that we'd like to do. And I'm going to involve uh, Tim on this one because uh, the, the site needs to be surveyed and uh, some kind of report given to the town board as to what needs to be done so we can get it into somebody's budget. Because I don't think there's anything in the parks budget now that covers if there's any remediation work from the flood that occurred down there four or five years ago. No, there's no, there's nothing in our budget for that. And also, uh, Doug informed me that we need a, an easement from Monroe County to, because part of the trail is going to be on their property. And the rest of it, he stated, was on town property. So I don't know whether you have to involve engineering and, to get a cost estimate or, or how you can handle that. Most likely, I'll, I'll talk to Mark Valentine and that group. See what we can come up with. Uh, we brought it up at, at last month's meeting, and we were told by the supervisor there was nothing in the new budget, so it's going to be approved. So it, 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 it's something for the future, but okay. it, it's really not needed until the sidewalk has finished up Penfield Road anyway, because uh, it's going to be the extension from Tops up to the south entrance of Ellison Park. That, It'll continue their trail through the town of Penfield. That's all for now, Nels. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ed. Uh, we had a brief discussion last two months, but Andrew Erfitz, Tim, and I did get together briefly at the rec department. And we said, in the future, We'd like to have a standard design for either rehabbing or building a new or tearing down and building a new kiosks by a specific design. And Tim, you were yeah, we had a very good idea about which one you'd like to pick. Yeah, we're we're just looking for consistency and decent looking kiosks throughout. We were going to evaluate all of our kiosks and uh go through that and try to pick out some of our nicer ones so we can copy uh, that design. I think Four Mile Creek is a very nice one. And um, also the 250 access trail is a, is a decent looking kiosk. So we would like to copy those two, more or less those two types of kiosks for the future so we can standardize it all with the same information and they all pretty much look the same. And they, they were both generated by scouts from the past, so scouts are, from the future can look to the good linkage. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tim. Yep. Trailhead Fitness Report, it's another repeat. Uh, and again, the Honey Creek signs are temporary, but they're up, so people know the, uh, the labeling of both ends of that trail uh, aren't a question mark. But where does this trail lead to? Where is it part of? So, again, that would be something we get the scouts to step up and build some good looking signs, whatever. Um, again, Wegman's uh, trail passport plates and rubbing posts, this to my mind is something a, a January, February project <coughs> to update the passport once we evaluate um, and and get a better uh, look at each of our trail heads and make sure that the rubbing posts are 
where they should be in the passport book as well as they're there at all, and they can be rubbed. So, so I do, I do have the um, the rubbing plaques in my possession right now, and um, we do have some posts, and we would just need to discuss on if you guys wanted to move the posts and all that stuff. That'd be a good winter project. We, yes, it would be. Yep, and we'd be ready to go uh, when the snow melts off. The excellent idea. Uh, back to Ed, do you have any key easement updates you want to alert us to? I had a discussion with Doug over at planning, and he assures me that any easements that we needed are in place, except for, for new trails. Uh, the Penfield Road one, which I mentioned to, uh, to Tim, that needs uh, some kind of um, resolution in writing. And also, when we did the uh, trail extension through Baker Commodities, we had a verbal commitment from New York State, but we probably need something in writing from New York State. So that piece of trail along 286, is, which is going to be on their property, uh, will allow us to put up a sign or, or, or whatever to mark where the trail is. And also, part of that trail is in the town of Brighton. Uh, the road got moved, but the the creek, the creek got moved, but the road didn't, and the town line didn't get moved along with the road. Uh, so Baker Commodities is in Brighton? Ba uh, Baker Commodities uh, easement is in place. No, but it, is Baker Commodities in Brighton? Well, uh, they own land on the south side of 286. Okay. Their, their operation, their their day-to-day -day operation and their buildings and facilities are in Penfield, but their land spans Penfield and Brighton. Interesting. Uh, I have two other things on... Uh, that I was talking about with Nels before, uh, Four Mile Creek uh, nature Preserve is not on our website that I can find. So that's that's something that needs some attention. So if we want to encourage people to go out there and walk, we, they got to uh, be able to find it. You're leading me up to our next piece on the agenda, which we do once a year, but it was a good lead in. Anything else, Ed? Yeah, there's a, a, a redo of footpaths that needs to happen. Uh, there was a, a washout on Penfield Place uh, property from the trailer parks on down the hill so that the trail the sidewalk that was designed for that area will probably have to re be redesigned and uh, that hasn't been built yet. But there, there, was, there was a easement established with that builder to, to put something in there. What, Ed, if I may, what project is that? Penfield Place. It's, uh, on 250. Pen no, Penfield. That, that's, out, that's off of Pen, Pen, uh, Panorama Trail. That's okay, the big so we have Penfield Place, which is the new development uh, just okay. north of the Y, is what they call maybe, Pen, maybe Penfield, maybe Penfield Square. Maybe excuse it's Penfield me. Park or something like that. Okay, and then the one you're referring to is where uh, off in Penfield Road or up? It's off of Panorama Trail. It's below the trailer parks. It's in the area there uh, uh, next to Nalgie. Got it. It, for, it, for the development uh, right. of the office buildings that are going back in there? That's and then correct. there was a trail that was going to go up from the mobile home parks down down into that property to right, connect to, into the roadway. Because the state wouldn't allow us to do anything on 441. 441, so, right, yeah. right, okay. So, so something needs to occur there, uh, working with planning to uh, to make something that'll, that'll work uh, and also help with the drainage situation because they've had to redo the drainage in that area also. And the Shady Rock subdivision, which is off of Scribner Road, uh, the easement's in place, but there was no provision for a, a sidewalk for the, or a path for the school children to come for over to the school. So we have to do a follow-up on that one. Uh, that was discussed with Doug also. Uh, we think maybe something got missed when, when the final plan was uh, approved to, to make sure that the developer put in some kind of a pathway for the school kids. They used to cut through his property to get to the school anyway, so uh, they, those were my discussions with uh, 
planning. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. All right, once a year we do this, uh, folks. Each have our bookmark monthly trail schedules with you. Um, instead of 2021, put down 2022. Um, Ellison Park will be January 8th on the 2022 calendar. February will be February 18th, which is a Friday night, two nights after the full moon, our full moon party, which uh, Andrew Erfitz, the new papa Andrew Erfitz, uh, enjoys doing, and we do our winter hikes off of that while everybody sleds on the other end of Harris Whale. Friday night, the 18th of February. March 12th is open. Uh, we need... We need you to brainstorm as we go through this. Think about something we haven't done in a while, and maybe you'd like to punch it in there for March. Um, April 9th, Channing Philbrick Park hike. May 11th, Harris Whalen and the uh, Flowers hike. Uh, I propose in June, for a number of reasons, our own Four Mile Creek Park for June 11th. We need to do a write-up for the website and the Scenic Treks magazine, which, because of our decisions here tonight, will go into the Scenic Treks uh, Winter Spring Bulletin tomorrow with Sabrina. Uh, but the, the idea that Sabrina, we write something up on the website concerning Four Mile Creek Park, Penfield. What was the date on that one, Nels? June 11th. June 11th, thank you. Yeah. And therefore, we can, you know, uh, I'll ask Anthony parenthetically, have we heard from the family at all? Have about, we heard from us just saying, hey, you know, we'll formally, officially say this park is ready to go for you. For the... Four Mile Creek Park. The, the, the uh, Amish family uh, yes. and what have you. Jim Costello and I chatted about that now probably a little over a month ago. We have not heard, I mean, we had attempted to try to get the Amish family that are scattered some here and, and out of town. But, you know, I think uh, that uh, at this point, uh, Nels, what I might suggest is, is that if we would like to do a, a dedication or a ribbon cutting or something like that, maybe at the start of a hike, we can make them aware. Uh, we can maybe grab some photos uh, and then send to the family because right now, I think with COVID and uh, them being out of town, it's just been difficult, but right. that shouldn't hold us up to, yeah, well, to maybe we christen it. We could look to June 11th to yeah, do that. Yeah, absolutely. That, might, right. be a good, that like might be a good time to do that. Excellent idea. Uh, July 9th is our only time we foray into Webster next year, Abraham Lincoln Park. August 13th, South Ellison from Penfield Road down. September 10th, our history hike at the Linear Philbrick um, <clears throat> Gazebo, up or down around Detroit Creek. And then October 8th next year, uh, which I think is a perfect time to return indeed to Shadow Pines property, open space next year. And then November 12th, Sherwood Fields, December 10th, Thousand Acre Swamp. So back to March, which is open. Any, any thoughts, anyone? To showcase. Do I recall we did something with Parrington or something, Power Mill or something? Yes, we did. Um, it was actually a year, uh, two years ago? No, well, anyway, yes, we were over at Powder Mill. How did that go? I, I wasn't there. I was, oh. no. Uh, folks liked it, actually. Um, I think we could probably go in a different direction. There's any number of directions to go. But we would also uh, let the town of, was it Pittsford, right? Or no, was it uh, Powder Mill Park? It's Pittsford, I think. But Yeah, we tried to uh, engage uh, their uh, equivalent to our organization to, to join us. Um, now, if that was a March, we, it might be snowy or muddy, too. And that's why a, a March is a, a concern, Powder Mill Park. How about Sherwood? 
Sherwood Fields, we don't have any. We usually hit that every two or three years. It, it, would, be, it would be 12. November next year. November. Oh, it is November. Okay, excuse me. Unless you th think it's a better March hike. I don't think so. <laughs> November can be the best hiking month we have. Yeah. Um, showcasing Vets Memorial in, in its more uh, secluded locations is another thought. But again, that's March. And uh, well, the, the bugs would be down, but the mud would be up. So. So, so Nels, if I may offer, I know historically in the past uh, you would have, um, you know, the February indoor hike uh, might, uh, and, and with COVID, I think that uh, got somewhat derailed. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a possibility to sure. consider in March, not knowing how the weather is, but, uh, you know, hold it uh, in the auditorium like we have and, you know, have some different and have speakers program. and have a program? How's that sound? We used to, people, folks, remember our indoor hike programs? We used to get uh, some exhibitors from other trails committees here and uh, have, have a 60 minute program. Our, one of our best ones was putting up the uh, rail bridge at Letchworth from the guy that designed it. Yep. Yep. It was one of our better ones. It was ones. a great program. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm for it. It's, I know you know, it was one of your favorites. Yeah, so. I, I attended every one that uh, since I've been in office and uh, was disappointed that uh, we got derailed with COVID like so many other things. But if uh, things continue to be the way they are and we're able to assemble safely and uh, and what have you, why not uh, look to do that again? And right. that was always a always a good program. Yeah, Perfect. and then the uh, other we invite other uh, trail groups to come in and exhibit and that would <clears throat> launch their better season too. So mm -hmm. I like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we can go to work and promote that. Uh, and I will write this up with Sabrina tomorrow and I will have Paula redo our 2022 uh, placard that we can show off uh, as early as, uh, well, as early as maybe even Shadow Pines this way. So, so what we do have is I've got the, the shadow, um, shadow Pines open space area notice up on the kiosk at Shadow Pines. I've got it postered in the uh, community center. And uh, so we'll probably get some calls and, and get a good number to attend. Nelson, so, has, has, has there been any, any thought to, about redoing our float trips that we used to do during the summer months? We didn't do them as yes. on the hike day, but we, helped, we did a couple of float trips that were quite popular for a while. Yeah, but they, they were extra, extra they were. dates. That's correct, they yeah. were. Well, that would be for the summer bulletin, so we have plenty of time to plan on that. There used to be Denny Tripp's thing, yeah. and uh, that we should inquire in how Denny's doing, by the way. Um, I haven't heard from him for a while. Has anybody heard from Denny Tripp? No. 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 I think I'll make a call. But the float trips I take around the... Out of Rondequoit Creek, yeah. We'd end up down in Rondequoit Bay from, uh, from Ellison Park. Well, we, we could put in at our own boat launch there behind Tops and go through our IT property. They would give us an option to look at our IT property from the, from the water. Uh, has, has anybody, uh, has there been any uh, chatter at all about uh, friendly or unfriendly uh, perusals of the area? Oh, yeah, they, they, don't, they don't prohibit boat float trips. They just don't want you getting out of the boat. They said you're certainly welcome to cruise down the creek through their property and look things over. Yeah. I think it would be an excellent, right. excellent idea for some of our, our people that wanted well, we to tour should. their property to, to get a look at it. <laughs> so you, we, just, you're, you know, that's, I'm, I'm making a note of that. We should at least do one. They're doing, they're, no, they're, but it should be not in the high summer. It should be more toward what? High water? Right. Well, after, after the spring, usual spring rains, we used to do a, a May or something, you know, like that when the weather's fairly nice. This would be a May trip? A good flow. May? May? Month of May? 
they're doing some building or some uh, digging at least uh, in the property right now. I don't know what's going on exactly, but I can certainly hear it. Well, all right, the idea we float by. Okay. <laughs> uh, what I want to do. Uh, <clears throat> I have two. I have two more items. All right. No, but I, let me just. Okay. Just wanna, uh, Supervisor Anthony Lafountain, uh, please tell us that the difference between a town park and an open space like Shadow Pines and it's somewhat of its advantages at the moment. So uh, whenever you have a town park, uh, designated town park, um, it's subject to alienation. And uh, so that means that as you look to do different things on the park, uh, it requires uh, the blessing from the state legislature and a sign off from the governor. And uh, so if we, if we have a, a park area that's uh, established and let's use Rothfuss Park uh, as an example, um, it, you know, there is no intent to do anything with that uh, other than to continue to build it out. Uh, so to give you an idea, the conceptual master plan, I believe now without checking the dates, um, is about 15 years old. And uh, we haven't fully built that uh, park out. Uh, at tonight's town board meeting, uh, we'll be going out uh, for bid to build two more soccer fields uh, behind uh, where those uh, current soccer fields are. In addition, if you take a look at the conceptual master plan, there's also a building identified as program space, not a community center, but program space. It uh, would be a little bit bigger than a shelter like Dolomite or Whalen Road. And it would be used for recreation uh, where they could hold uh, different uh, programming, classes, educational, things like that. So that's a park, uh, we've identified what is going on there. And uh, so that, any, any changes that, any significant changes to that would be subject to uh, uh, the rules and regulations of alienation. At Shadow Pines, uh, we have not designated that as a park. We have more designated that uh, as town property that is a combination, that could be a combination of park, open space and facilities. And uh, so a couple of the, uh, the facilities that um, are being considered as part of that, uh, you know, could be lodges, uh, could be the pickleball that uh, we're looking at. Um, so the Shadow Pines property could be considered uh, kind of a multi-use park open space uh, and some facilities there. So that's the big, the big difference. As soon as you classify something as a park, then all of a sudden your hands become tied by the state. And uh, you know, I'll say this on uh, the open mic and uh, the record: uh, no good can ever come from the state uh, helping you uh, on anything. So, I second that. <laughs> Is there ever an advantage to designating a park? Um, y y y you know. Um, you know, I think Penfield, and I'll just speak for Penfield, uh, Penfield has had a history that, you know, from a park standpoint, from an open space standpoint, uh, it has been our philosophy that uh, we want to keep that as it is for generations to come. Um, there have been other communities that uh, have elected to either uh, sell off or parcel off uh, some of their uh, parkland, uh, and then that's where the alienation uh, comes in. Um, you know, sometimes uh, they want to use it for you know potential income uh, into their community. Uh, a lot of smaller communities might do that uh, because they don't have the tax base. But I think the philosophy of Penfield over the years has been uh, that we want to have the right balance of open space, uh, parkland and uh, other features like that for our residents, not only today, but future generations as we go through. And uh, I will tell you that as long as I've been supervisor and as long as I've been involved with the town, which dates back to uh, 1975 when I first became an employee uh, of the town, uh, it has been this town's philosophy, you know, to manage uh, a nice balance of 
predominantly residential uh, with uh, some commercial and uh, adequate parks and recre parks recreation and uh, open space land for our residents. Thank you. Ed, you got a couple more here? Yeah, I had uh, a fellow from Webster Trails over doing a little hiking for me and he uh, mentioned that the boat launch behind Tops is in need of some repair so people don't slip into the creek accidentally. It's, it seemed to be quite slippery that the times that he was using it, so I don't know what needs to be done but down there. But. I didn't even know there was a boat launch there. Well, it's a, it's, it's actually a, a kayak canoe. Yeah, it's a kayak canoe. Launch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not, yeah. not putting anything bigger than a kayak or a canoe, <coughs> a canoe. into the creek. A canoe in there, yeah. <laughs> And also at the conservation board meeting last night, one of the board members did a hike on the, along Arenicoy Creek and he commented that you can't get past the Penfield town line and he wondered why we weren't pushing Parenton to get our, our, our trail extended over to Spring Lake Park. I don't, I, I don't think we've uh, renewed our effort to work with Parenton to see what was going on there. Well, we answered that six it, months ago. Yeah. Or five months ago. Yeah. Parenton proposed to come from Spring Lake Park under the Linden Road Bridge and bypass the Riprap Bank and join us at the Penfield Town Line. At once upon a time they did. Then they found out all the problems and the costs and abandoned it. Yeah. And there's nothing we can do because all of the extension effort is or has to be through Parenton. I, I, I understand that, but I, I think we ought to be able to work with Parenton to see what their long-range goals are. But I don't think they've completely you mean abandoned we, we should the idea. Bug, bug them? No, I don't mean bug them. <laughs> I have a lot of friends in Fairport. <laughs> well, the current answer is it was proposed and then dropped because of cost. Yeah. And, and that, that's a span of five years. Well, we, we, we also have a similar problem down on Empire Boulevard. How do you get across Empire Boulevard once you get to Lucian Warren Park <laughs> without taking your life in hands to get over to, to the, our park on the, on the north side of, the, of Empire Boulevard? Now, the city solved that problem by building a gateway arch. <laughs> but those are prohibitively expensive for people in the suburbs. You know, one time I heard that there, there might even be a tunnel proposed under Empire Boulevard. So there's, there's options available if, if, we, if we look for what we can do. Yeah, I would continue a dialogue with, with Parenton. I don't know who their heads up their active trails committee. It, it isn't part of the town like it is here with Penfield. Well, they have a relationship. It isn't quite the same as ours, but there is one. So, anybody else with something open? A concern, comment. Yeah, we're just finishing up, Mike. Uh, All right. So, all right, folks, we so have had I'll, I'll if, I, if I may, Thank sorry, you. Nels, if I if I may, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, mention uh, since our last meeting, um, you know, Mr. Masterton and uh, his his lovely wife uh, are proud uh, new parents of a baby girl, and uh, as you mentioned briefly. Uh, Andy Erkvitz uh, and uh, his wife uh, just uh, within the last few days uh, had a little baby girl. So uh, the Erkvitz Masterton uh, clan uh, continues uh, with uh, another generation, which is uh, great to see. And congratulations to both uh, Tim, uh, his family, and Andy and his family. Thank you. And Eleanor, that was Tim's excuse absent last <laughs> month and Andy's this month. <laughs> Tony, just, is there any update on the Clark House? Just out of uh, so, so good. This week. Yep, absolutely. Great, uh, great question. So, 
Uh, we had, um, by way of a little bit of history, we had Bergman Associates uh, that uh, came in and uh, did a top to bottom uh, at the request of the town board. They got to a point uh, that uh, they had uh, to open up uh, more uh, aspects of it, uh, so out exterior walls, interior walls, and things like that. Um, we uh, had to go out uh, for quotes for that. Uh, we did receive three quotes. Uh, the town board uh, will be uh, looking at those quotes uh, this uh, evening. I would uh, hope and expect the board would probably select uh, one of those groups. Uh, they'll then work with uh, the town, uh, the um, Bergman Associates, and you'll actually start to see some holes cut uh, on the outside of the building and, uh, and then inside. Um, I think they have 19 locations they want to check. Uh, but the concern was for um, mold, uh, uh, asbestos and rot uh, and uh, in order for them to complete uh, their their final report back to the town board um, I would hope that uh, we should be able to see uh, a final report back uh, if not by uh, the next trails committee I could uh, give you an update uh, or shortly thereafter is there still thoughts of a brewery or whatever that well, there's been talk about uh, a lot of things. Uh, I think it really gets down to, you know, what is the direction uh, and, uh, and and would somebody be able to afford uh, to come in? Because, uh, you know, certainly the town can't spend taxpayers' money uh, to get it all fixed up and then just turn it over to a business uh, without, you know, some type of a, a lease arrangement that um, uh, takes into account the amount of work. And, uh, and so from a leasing standpoint, that uh, that could be prohibitive with some. But there has been a lot of discussions about some restaurants, uh, some biking, uh, some breweries and things like that. So a lot of, a lot of things still floating on the table, but nothing uh, that has uh, been finalized at this point. Tony, is there any update on the sidewalk project on Penfield Road? The last, uh, the last I and I made a note, uh, uh, Ed. Uh, the last I heard is that uh, BME had uh, completed uh, their engineering at the request of Old Castle, uh, former Dolomite, uh, because they're the ones that are putting that in. Uh, we did piggyback. The town did piggyback on a on a on a about 250 plus or minus feet uh, from. Uh, the driveway of Old Castle uh, and uh, across to, to connect up to um, the sidewalk just west of uh, Gentles Farm Market. Um, I don't have anything more other than that was done. My guess, Ed, is this, is that uh, while I think there was an interest to uh, have that sidewalk put in both by the town this year and uh, Old Castle because that, that's a responsibility that they have and it's kind of tied to the sale of their building and everything like that. The biggest problem that we have experienced and the town and, and others are experiencing is uh, availability of concrete. You can't get concrete. Uh, you can't get concrete drivers. Um, in fact, Heinz, uh, Heinz uh, Contractors, uh, who does sidewalks uh, for us, uh, we had uh, three projects. Um, they, they came to us and basically said the earliest they could get to us is sometime uh, mid to late November. Uh, chances are the weather is not going to be conducive to that. And uh, they've indicated that uh, we will be first up in the spring of uh, 2022. But uh, availability of concrete, availability of drivers has uh, been a big factor. E even, even for even small jobs that uh, our team at DPW have been doing. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Come see us at Shadow Pines, 10 o'clock this Saturday at the Shadow Pines parking lot, Clark and Whalen Road. We have a hike for you. Uh, look for the gold banner and the card table to sign in. Terry Bruce will be awaiting you. <laughs> Our next meeting will be Wednesday, November 3rd at 5 o'clock next month, right here at the auditorium. Thank you all. We've had a meeting, we're adjourned.